Cordell Hull, October 2, 1871 to July 23, 1955, was an American politician from Tennessee, best known as the longest-serving U.S. Secretary of State, holding the position for 11 years (1933 to 1944) in the administration of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt during most of World War II. Hull received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1945 for his role in establishing the United Nations. Nations, and was referred to by President Roosevelt as the "...father of the United Nations." Born in Olympus, Tennessee, he pursued a legal career after graduating from the Cumberland School of Law. He won election to the Tennessee House of Representatives and served in Cuba during the Spanish–American War. He represented Tennessee in the United States House of Representatives from 1907 to 1921 and from 1923 to 1931. As a member of the House Ways and Means Committee, Hull helped pass the Revenue Act of 1913 and the Revenue Act of 1916, which implemented the federal income tax and the federal estate tax. He served as chairman of the Democratic National Committee from 1921 to 1924 and was a presidential candidate at the 1928 Democratic National Convention. Hull won election to the Senate in 1930, but resigned from the Senate in 1933 to become Secretary of State. Roosevelt and Hull pursued the Good Neighbor policy, which sought to avoid U.S. intervention in Latin American affairs. In the aftermath of Mexican agrarian reforms, he developed the Hull Doctrine as a way to compensate foreign investors in the aftermath of nationalization. In November 1941, he presented the Hull Note to Japan, demanding Japanese withdrawal from French Indochina and China. In 1943, Hull and his staff drafted the document that became the United Nations Charter. Hull resigned as Secretary of State due to poor health in 1944. Hull served 11 terms in the United States House of Representatives 1907 to 1921 and 1923 to 1931 and authored the Federal Income Tax Laws of 1913 and 1916 and the Inheritance Tax of 1916. After an electoral defeat in 1920, Hull served as chairman of the Democratic National Committee. He was returned to the House in 1922 and was then elected to the Senate in 1930, but resigned upon being named Secretary of State in 1933. Hull recorded 30 years of combined service in the House and the Senate. In 1933, Hull was appointed Secretary of State by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. He served 11 years until he retired from public office. Hull became the underlying force and architect in the creation of the United Nations, drafting, along with his staff, the United Nations Charter in mid-1943. He resigned as Secretary of State on November 30, 1944 because of failing health. In 1945, Cordell Hull was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for co-initiating the United Nations. Hull died after suffering several strokes and heart attacks in 1955 in Washington, D.C., and is buried in the vault of the Chapel of St. Joseph of Arimathea in the Washington National Cathedral, which is an Episcopal church. There is now a Cordell Hull Museum located near his birthplace in Birdstown, Tennessee, which houses his papers and other memorabilia. <laughs> Early life and education Cordell Hull was born in a log cabin in Olympus, Tennessee, which is now part of Pickett County, Tennessee, but was then part of Overton County. He was the third of the five sons of William Pascal Hull (1840–1923) and Mary Elizabeth Hull (née Riley) (1841–1903). His brothers were named Orestes (1868), Senadius (1870), Wyoming (1875), and Roy (1881). 
Hull's father reportedly tracked down and killed a man because of a blood feud. His mother was a descendant of Isaac Riley who was granted 200 acres .81 square kilometers in Pickett County near Birdstown for Revolutionary War service this land is still in the family, as well as Samuel Wood who immigrated from Leicestershire, England on the ship Hopewell and fought in the Virginia militia. Hull's mother's family Riley Wood holds the Dar distinction of the most documented ancestors to have fought in the Revolutionary War. Hull devoted a section in his memoirs, "'Cabin on the Hill' to dispelling an old rumor that his mother was part Cherokee Indian, and subsequent documented family history has confirmed his ancestry. Hull attended college from 1889 until 1890. He gave his first speech at the age of 16. At the age of 19, Hull became the elected chairman of the Clay County Democratic Party. Hull studied at National Normal University later merged with Wilmington College, Ohio from 1889 until 1890. In 1891, he graduated from Cumberland School of Law at Cumberland University and was admitted to the bar. Early career Hull served in the Tennessee House of Representatives from 1893 to 1897. During the Spanish–American War, he served in Cuba as a captain in the 4th Regiment of the Tennessee Volunteer Infantry. From 1903 to 1907, Hull served as a local judge, later he was elected to the United States House of Representatives where he served 11 terms 1907 to 1921 and 1923 to 1931 totaling 22 years. As a member of the Powerful Ways and Means Committee, he fought for low tariffs and claimed authorship of the federal income tax laws of 1913 and 1916 and the inheritance tax of 1916. After his defeat in the congressional election of 1920, he served as chairman of the Democratic National Committee. He was one of several candidates for president at the 1928 Democratic National Convention, which ultimately chose Al Smith as nominee. Hull was influential in advising Albert Gore Sr., then a state legislator, to run for the U.S. Congress in 1938. <laughs> Secretary of State Hull was elected to the Senate in 1930. In 1933, Roosevelt named him Secretary of State. Roosevelt appointed him to lead the American delegation to the London Economic Conference in 1933, but it collapsed when Roosevelt publicly rejected the main plans. In 1943, Hull served as United States delegate to the Moscow Conference. At all times his main objective was to enlarge foreign trade and lower tariffs. The more important issue of the American role in the World War II was handled by Roosevelt who worked through Sumner Wells, the second-ranking official at the State Department. Hull did not attend the summit meetings Roosevelt had with Churchill and Stalin. In 1943 Hull finally destroyed Wells' career by threatening to expose his homosexuality. In a speech in 1937, Mayor Fiorello H. LaGuardia of New York said that brown-shirted Nazis ought to be featured as the «climax» of a chamber of horrors in the upcoming World's Fair. The Nazi government organ, Der Angriff called the mayor a «Jewish ruffian» who had been bribed by Jewish and communistic agents and was a criminal disguised as an officeholder. In the ensuing exchanges, Hull sent a letter of regret to Berlin for intemperate comments on both sides but also explained the principle of freedom of speech. As the response of Nazi propaganda organs rose in pitch to include characterizing American women as prostitutes. Hull sent a letter of protest to Berlin, which elicited an explanation 
but no apology. In 1938, Hull engaged in a famous dialogue with Mexican Foreign Minister Eduardo Hay concerning the failure of Mexico to compensate Americans who lost farmlands during the agrarian reforms of the late 1920s. He insisted that compensation must be prompt, adequate, and effective. Though the Mexican constitution guaranteed compensation for expropriation or nationalization, nothing had yet been paid. While Hay admitted Mexico's responsibility, he replied that there is, "...no rule universally accepted in theory nor carried out in practice which makes obligatory the payment of immediate compensation." The so-called, "...hull formula." has been adopted in many treaties concerning international investment, but is still controversial, especially in Latin American countries, which historically have subscribed to the Calva Doctrine, which suggests that compensation is to be decided by the host country and that as long as there is equality between nationals and foreigners and no discrimination, there cannot be any claim in international law. The tension between the Hull formula and the Calva doctrine is still of importance today in the law of international investment. Hull pursued the good neighbor policy with Latin American nations, which has been credited with preventing Nazi subterfuge in that region. Hull and Roosevelt also maintained relations with Vichy France, which Hull credited with allowing General Henry Giraud's forces to join Allied forces in the North African campaign against Germany. Hull handled formal statements with foreign governments. He sent the Hull note to Japan prior to the attack, which was formally titled, Outline of Proposed Basis for Agreement between the United States and Japan. Hull received the news that the Pearl Harbor attack had started while outside his office the Japanese ambassador Kichizaburo Nomura and Japan's special envoy Saburo Kurusu were waiting to see Hull with a 14-part message from the Japanese government that officially notified of a breakdown in negotiations. The U.S. had broken the code and Hull knew the contents. He blasted the diplomats, in all my 50 years of public service, I have never seen such a document that was more crowded with infamous falsehood and distortion. Hull chaired the Advisory Committee on Postwar Foreign Policy, created in February 1942. When the Free French forces of Charles de Gaulle occupied the islands of Saint-Pierre and Miquelon south of Newfoundland in December 1941, Hull lodged a very strong protest and even went as far as referring to the Gaullist naval forces as the so-called Free French. His request to have the Vichy governor reinstated was met with strong criticism in the American press. The islands remained under the Free French Movement until the end of World War II. Topic: <laughs> SS St. Louis Incident. In 1939, Hull advised President Roosevelt to reject the SS St. Louis, a German ocean liner carrying 936 Jews seeking asylum from Germany. Hull's decision sent the Jews back to Europe on the eve of the Holocaust. Some historians estimate that 254 of the passengers were ultimately murdered by the Nazis. There were two conversations on the subject between Secretary of the Treasury Morgenthau and Secretary of State Cordell Hull. In the first, 3.17 p.m. on 5 June 1939, Hull made it clear to Morgenthau that the passengers could not legally be issued U.S. tourist visas as they had no return addresses. Furthermore, Hull made it clear to Morgenthau that the issue at hand was between the Cuban government and the passengers. The U.S., in effect, had no role. In the second conversation at 3.54 p.m. on June 6, 1939, Morgenthau said they did not know where the ship was and he inquired whether it was proper to have the Coast Guard look for it. Hull responded by saying that he didn't see any reason why it could not. 
Hull then informed him that he did not think that Morgenthau would want the search for the ship to get into the newspapers. Morgenthau said, Oh no no, no. They would just Oh, they might send a plane to do patrol work. There would be nothing in the papers. Hull responded, Oh, that would be all right. In September 1940, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt maneuvered with another State Department official to bypass Hull's refusal to allow Jewish refugees aboard a Portuguese ship, the SS Kwanzaa, to receive visas to enter the U.S. Through her efforts, the Jewish refugees disembarked on September 11, 1940, in Virginia. In a similar incident, American Jews sought to raise money to prevent the mass murder of Romanian Jews but were blocked by the State Department. In wartime, in order to send money out of the United States, two government agencies had to sign a simple release the Treasury Department under Henry Morgenthau and the State Department under Secretary Cordell Hull. Morgenthau signed immediately. The State Department delayed, delayed, and delayed, as more Jews were dying in the Transnistria camps. In 1940 Jewish representatives in the USA lodged an official complaint against the discriminatory policies the State Department was using against the Jews. The results were fatal. The Secretary of State, Cordell Hull, gave strict orders to every USA consulate worldwide forbidding the issuing of visas to Jews. At the same time, a Jewish congressman petitioned the president, FDR, requesting his permission to allow 20,000 Jewish children from Europe to enter the USA. The president totally ignored this petition as well as its sender. United Nations establishment Hull was the underlying force and architect in the creation of the United Nations, as recognized by the 1945 Nobel Prize for Peace, an honor for which Franklin D. Roosevelt nominated him. During World War II, Hull and Roosevelt had worked toward the development of a world organization to prevent a Third World War. Hull and his staff drafted the Charter of the United Nations in mid-1943. <laughs> Later years Hull resigned on November 30, 1944 because of failing health as the longest-serving Secretary of State, having served 11 years, 9 months in that post. Roosevelt described Hull upon his departure as, "...the one person in all the world who has done his most to make this great plan for peace the United Nations an effective fact." The Norwegian Nobel Committee honored Hull with the Nobel Peace Prize in 1945 in recognition of his efforts for peace and understanding in the Western Hemisphere, his trade agreements, and his work to establish the United Nations. <laughs> Personal life At the age of 45, in 1917, he married a widow Rose Frances Witz Whitney Hull (1875–1954) of an Austrian Jewish family of Staunton, Virginia. The couple had six children. Mrs. Hull died at age 79 in Washington D.C. in 1954. Topic: <laughs> Death and Legacy. He died on July 23, 1955, at age 83, at his home in Washington, D.C., after a lifelong struggle with familial remitting relapsing sarcoidosis often confused with tuberculosis. He is buried in the vault of the Chapel of St. Joseph of Arimathea in the Washington National Cathedral. Hull's memory is preserved by Cordell Hull Dam on the Cumberland River near Carthage, Tennessee. 
The dam impounds Cordell Hull Lake, covering approximately 12,000 acres (49 square kilometers). His law school, Cumberland School of Law, continues to honor him with a Cordell Hull Speakers Forum and the pictured moot court room. Cordell Hull Birthplace State Park, near Birdstown, Tennessee, was established in 1997 to preserve Hull's birthplace and various personal effects Hull had donated to the citizens of Pickett County, including his Nobel Peace Prize. A segment of Kentucky Highway Routes 90, 63, and 163, from Interstate 65 at Mammoth Cave National Park south to the Tennessee State Line, is named, Cordell Hull Highway. The Shoreline School District in Shoreline, Washington, formerly had a Cordell Hull Middle School. It was renamed in the mid 1990s to Meridian Park Elementary, after a renovation. The Cordell Hull Building, on Capitol Hill in Nashville, Tennessee, is a secure 10-story building that contains the offices of the Tennessee Legislature. The Eisenhower Executive Office Building formerly the Old Executive Office Building in Washington, D.C., next to the White House, contains the ornately decorated Cordell Hull Room on the second floor, which is used for meetings. The room was Cordell Hull's office when he served as U.S. Secretary of State. Topic: <laughs> Fictional appearance or mention. Hull is a significant character in the World War series of science fiction, alternate history novels by Harry Turtledove, and also plays a background role in the same author's Southern Victory series volume American Empire, The Center Cannot Hold. Charles Trowbridge played Hull in Sergeant York and Mission to Moscow Hull was portrayed by veteran actor George McCready in the 1970 film Torah. 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 Hull is one of the presidential cabinet members who are characters in the musical Annie. During the scene at the dinner table in the 2005 film Wedding Crashes, Grandma Mary Cleary, played by actress Ellen Albertini Dow, mentions Hull, though only by his cabinet position, rather than by name, was her late husband. There was a very small chain of hotels named after him, which he allegedly owned or co-owned in Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky, one of which was the Cordell Hull Hotel in downtown Gallatin, Tennessee, which c. 1971 was used to house the first ever classes of the new Volunteer State Community College while the campus was being built. This was one of the hotel's last official uses. Hull is mentioned by name in the 1937 Calypso song, FDR in Trinidad, popularized by Attila the Hun, and also by Rai Kuda on his 1972 album Into the Purple Valley. Hull is prominently featured in Robert Ludlum's novel The Scarlatti Inheritance. <laughs> Notes <laughs> <laughs>